Welcome back. Of course, uh, many thanks for staying with Newsnight. We're getting a lot of feedback regarding state of politics, state of independent institutions, oversight as well of uh, the executive by the legislative as well. And these are some of your thoughts. <clears throat> and Neil Lazaro, and I read this a bit earlier, we're in a free political transfer window. Kenyans will be treated to more drama with strange collusion. Duale is just a victim of African revolutionary politics. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. And you are, this is Collins Bohr, ask Senator Lituri whether there are plans to have a new party for the deputy president. And if not, what is the much publicized Jubilee Asili about? And I already touched on that a little bit, but uh, if we get a chance to bring that in. Fred Osiro says, the term is not survivors, but psychophants. Gunjiri Wambugu, many others taking the president's side are doing so not because they believe in it, but want to survive the coming storm. It's a bad time to have no principles. His thoughts. Okay. And we have uh, an SMS, okay. Gloria from Machakos, please ask Nyeri MP Gonjiri, how can they unite Kenyans if they are not united themselves as Jubilee? Okay, and we have another SMS. Thanks for sending them in. Uh, no um, name, but you say, why do leaders champion issues of Wanainchi when they are thrown out of power? Linturi is not being honest. Okay, so I've got uh, two tweets that are directed directly to Honorable Gonjiri. I want to start with you on this one. Honorable Gonjiri, our viewers tonight asking you this. Justin Dugo saying, uh, we have a president who wants to be supported by both the Jubilee Party. Uh, ask Gonjiri Wambogo uh, and also the opposition with a handshake. Who is left to perform the oversight function? A similar one here by King Kaito says, how can a legislator who is in the ruling party execute the oversight function, putting what Gunjiri Wambogo is saying in perspective tonight. Honorable Gunjiri Wambogo, the next two years, how will oversight be performed by a parliament that has seemingly been whipped into line or in line? Um, first and foremost, I don't think parliament has been whipped into line. I, I think we are losing a very fundamental part of what it is that our, 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 our structure of politics is about. Remember, when you run for office, for presidency, you run as a head of a party. You run, you also support members of parliament to be elected into party. And your target or your goal is to have as many members of parliament elected from your side in parliament as possible. Why do you want to have that kind of numbers in parliament? Because once you get into office, you want to implement or execute a certain agenda that you actually is, that is the one that took you into office. You can't then argue that once you get elected as a member of parliament of Jubilee, and that is why we have a majority side and a minority side, once you get elected into parliament and you have a majority side and you're the president, you now are supposed to divorce your structure of politics, your, which is a, your parliamentary leadership, from you as a presidency. I think we, we, this is why I'm saying we have been dishonest, because we elected President Uhuru Kenyatta. We gave him a, jo a majority of members of parliament in parliament and in, set, in senate so that he could go and implement a manifesto. This is a manifesto he's implementing. I wish we are saying that what he is doing is not what he promised he was going to do. Then you could actually be asking, yes, why aren't you oversighting them? It is important for us to understand that that is a principle. That is what is called standing on principle. When I ran for office as a member of, a member of parliament for Nyeri, one of the things I actually did was align myself with the Jubilee Party, with the Jubilee uh, policies and with the Jubilee agendas. I would be dishonest to then go to parliament and start saying that I do not support those agendas, those policies. But if we but, agreed we are going to do certain things, and that Gonjiri, is what we are doing as parliament, Honorable Gonjiri, why would you are, I? You, Honorable Gonjiri, you are elected by the people of Nyeri Town. They have concerns that require oversight yes. on your part. They have questions. What happens when those questions go but contrary see, to the wishes? Wahiga. Let me finish. When they go contrary to the wishes of the executive, it sounds like you've already taken a side. Should that clash ever happen? No. No, 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 no. I was elected by the people of Nyeri, and I was running against a lot of other people. I was elected on the people, by the people of Nyeri because what I presented to them was a jubilee manifesto at national, regional, and local level. I came to parliament to implement that manifesto. Should the executive at any point deviate from that manifesto, I will challenge them.
Because that is what my, the people who elected me expect me to do. But you cannot tell me to challenge the executive for the sake of challenging them. The, the, I only challenge them if they are going against the agreement that the people of Nyeri have with the executive. Remember, the people of Nyeri also voted overwhelmingly for Jubilee and for this presidency. If he now starts going against what he promised the people of Nyeri, then I will have a problem with him. Then I will now be able to challenge the executive. So far, the things that we expected to get from the people, from the executive, we are getting them. We are getting jobs. We are getting our roots done. Why would I then just start being a fuss Why, just for the sake of, be, of saying that I'm oversighting? And oversighting is ensuring that the executive is doing so, what it promised it would in, do. In your that view, is what oversighting is. It is not opposing what the executive is doing, which, is, which seems to be the perception that people have. No. Oversighting is ensuring that the money is allocated according to the manifesto of what you promised. Is ensuring that the CSS and PSS are working according to the to the to what it is that you expect them to do. It's, a, it's, a, it's ensuring that the government is doing what it promised. That is what is called oversight. It is okay. not opposing government. Okay. okay. Honorable Linturi, do you have the same definition of oversight with Honorable Gonjiro Wambogo feeling that with the current stance he's taken, he is very comfortable in the oversight duty he has played on behalf of the people of Nyeri in regards to the executive. Do you share a similar view? Honorable Linturi, can you hear me? Where did he go? Okay, we seem to have uh, lost him there. But uh, Honorable Gunjiri, even as we carry on, as we wait for him, yes. Jubilee Asili, your take on yes. it, when you saw those pictures, what did that tell you? Uh, I think, again, we have seen another uh, backtrack because on, there was a day that all, uh, certain members of parliament from Jubilee were on all over the place online just talking about the way Jubilee, Asili, is a way, place of original ideas. And I, I found it very interesting when I listened to Senator Linturi trying to say that what they have opened up is, I mean, I could only understand it to be a club where you go and hang out, where you go and comfort each other. And I'm asking myself, what are they comforting each other from? My understanding is that anybody can walk into the Jubilee Center right now on Pangani, and nobody's going to stop them. So this is just mischief. This is, they need to be honest with us. They need to tell us that they wanted to start another party, and they realize that the backlash is not going to allow them to do that. And also, uh, Wahiga, it's important for us to be honest to Kenyans again. Most of us, members of parliament and senators, are not leaders in parliament. We are not committee chairs. We are not vice chairs. What has happened to these guys who are sulking and uh, throwing tantrums all over the place is that they used to be chairmen and they have been removed. Now they are like us. But they are out there saying, we have been punished. What is happening to us? No, nothing has happened to them. Not all of us can be leaders. And you can't be leaders all the time. I love what Dwale said. Everything that has a beginning has an end. He has been the majority leader of, uh, of, the, of Jubilee and, and the, the Jubilee coalition for seven years. He has accepted that his term is ended. And he's done it with a lot of grace and a lot of dignity. When I listen to so people like Senator Linturi arguing about they were being, because they are feeling so bad because they were de-whipped from being chairs of committees, I'm asking myself, majority of the members of Jubilee in Senate and Parliament are not chairs or leaders in parliament. What are you saying? Are you saying that there's something wrong with us? who are not chairman or who are not uh, vice chairman of committees. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that when you're removed from being a vice chair or being a chair, you stop being, uh, you stop being an effective member of, or a supporter of Jubilee? Are, we, are you saying that those of us who are not vice chairman, who are not cha chairman and vice chairman should have been fighting the party because that is what now seems to be happening. Okay. If you used to be a chairman and you're no longer a chairman, you're now saying you're going to go and fight the party. Why would you say that? I believe This is a leadership I... position you are entrusted with mm -hmm. that has now been given to somebody else who is a member of Jubilee, a senator like like yourself or a, or a parliamentarian like yourself, okay. why don't you just support them? Why you, do you want to take this to be to look like you are being belittled? While a lot of your colleagues who are in parliament with you, who may, might even have served longer than you, have not been chairman or vice chairman of committees. Okay, uh, you've made your point. Let's allow uh, Honorable Linturi. Okay, we seem to have a challenge uh, uh, getting him on the line. I'll be giving him a chance uh, to uh, respond shortly. Just to take you back, nevertheless, uh, Honorable Gonjiri Wambogo, do we have him now? Yes. Okay, Honorable Linturi, can you hear me? Do we now have you on yes, the line? Yes, I can. 
Good. I don't know if you've caught any of that conversation. We were speaking about oversight with Honorable Gonjiri. He's very clear that he is not in any way uh, falling short on his oversight role, even as he uh, strongly supports the executive and, of course, the leadership of the Jubilee Party. With us, some of our viewers tonight concerned about the efficacy of his uh, oversight ability, uh, you know, with the conversation that he's had tonight. Are you concerned about the oversight role of the Senate and the National Assembly with the changes that we are seeing in parties over the last couple of weeks and moving forward? forward <coughs> honorable linturi are you concerned can you weigh in on that hello hello honorable okay we seem to Maura. have a challenge can you hear me now i can hear you yes yes i'm asking you are you concerned about the challenge of oversight that many of our viewers are concerned about tonight when you look at parliament Yeah, yeah, Maura, yes, that is a serious problem, and I will, I will repeat it once again in any whatever forum, that uh, challenge, oversight is a serious, serious challenge. Like, for example, you know, there are certain reports that, I'm been, <coughs> that we've been permanently been waiting for, and uh, when you look at the manner in which uh, committees have been constituted and why it takes, say, more than six months or nine months to bring reports, you cannot really understand. Look at what happened at uh, the, 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 um, the report on uh, the Ruaraka land. Look at uh, what has happened. This mess uh, project, he amended because supplies. The report is, never, is not coming. We, we have many other things. And you know, I am trying to, to explain that uh, being independent minded, uh, minded or being a uh, 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 being uh, someone that has a divergent view does not necessarily mean that you oppose the president and his agenda. No, those che any excess power authority without checks can really, people can get drunk. And that is why it was necessary to have these institutions to check one another. But when where you find that, uh, for example, and deputy speaker, to give an example to illustrate, you are Outstand from office because of ruling on a, on a matter on a particular way, other than pro look, looking at the mechanisms laid out to ask for a review of that ruling, then you are kicked out. That should tell you that in the next two years, uh, the committees of parliament will not function or do anything that is of any good to the public. We are in a situation whereby the country has no opposition at, at all. Left stealing of public finances is happening right, left, and center. But because of what we are calling loyalty, right, to whoever or to the party, these things are not coming out. So we are saying, can you please allow us, as independent-minded people, even to really raise up these issues with the public or with the monarchy? The Ngojiris of uh, today and the others should also be looking at what we did in the first term when there was some bit of freedom in trying to do what we are required of parliament. That is when Iran's were done, Stima, when that is when Tibet's were being collected, we are we are being done. And we didn't so much that particular period of time because uh, members of parliament were moving up and down with the deputy president going to do one or two things because we had already gotten authority from the party leader, who is the president in the state house, in the first meeting, that whenever you want to do anything, go and see William. You channel your ideas or your issues through him, and because we are running a government seamlessly, then we didn't have a problem. So we have done so much as Jubilee. We would not want this against uh, going down the drain. But we are still insisting that if we have really to achieve the Jubilee Manifesto, then we must start thinking and sitting together to listen together and ask each other questions. For example, the mayor, for example, the manifesto that we had, we were to deliver 10,000 loans within the first five years or so within the, the, the Uruto presidency. Okay. But I can tell you, even as we sit now, mm -hmm. when we look at the number of loans that have been done, there are a number of many loans have been done. But still, the areas in the country where loans have been given, work is not going. Mm -hmm. We have Tibet that are going, ongoing. 
they are not, they have not been completed. And so we require some bit of peace and questioning of one another to ensure that permanently the government is being put to check so that at least they can become more proactive in ensuring that those projects are completed for the benefit of the Monanchi. When they are done for the benefit of the Monanchi, it's the Wanjiku and the, uh, and the Achieng uh, and the Floras that uh, benefit because okay. of a government that has been made to act and to fulfill its promise by virtue of the agitation and the pressure being put by members of parliament. But Senator, if we want to Senator, adopt the notion mm -hmm. that we should not ask a question because the party are sent without differentiating the function of uh, when we must deal with matters of a party and as a parliament, then we've been going wrong. Our okay. party, even as we speak, we've never had a meeting where we have discussed serious party issues are internally Senator, where probably allow me to should be accused of disagreeing okay. with the position that our party has taken. That has never happened. Okay. And I don't let, think let that's me... the best way to run institutions. Okay, Senator, thank you. Let me allow Honorable Gunji to respond to something that you've raised, the challenge of the lack yes. of an opposition. And, and this is something that also some viewers have raised concerns about in their feedback. And Honorable Gunji, I think it's interesting that you once wrote in an article that was published in 2014 about mm -hmm. why Kenya needs an organized, effective political opposition. Are you concerned that in 2020 Kenya doesn't have uh, the vibrant opposition of yesteryears? Uh, thank you, Ahiga. First and foremost, it's, it's important for us to make one point clear. You, you can actually oppose. Nothing stops anybody from opposing. I mean, I started a campaign to oppose early campaigns by myself. It was not popular. I was a minority. And I actually went out every day and I kept saying we should stop early campaigns. We should stop premature 2022 campaigns. I was called all manner of names by even colleagues of mine. But I felt very strongly that there was something going on that was wrong. I opposed it. That nothing stops anybody, any member of parliament, including people like Senator Nenturi, who say they are independent-minded, from opposing something they don't agree with. Today, it is actually a popular position. Today, the whole idea of premature campaigns, everybody's on this side arguing that, yes, we shouldn't have premature campaigns. Even people who used to do premature campaigns are saying they were not doing premature campaigns. I opposed that position alone. I don't see why Lin, uh, Senator Linturi or anybody who has a problem with something that is going on has, doesn't, cannot do it. You just need to just step up. You have nothing to lose. Nobody's going to throw you out of parliament. If you have an issue that you do not agree with, just oppose it. I think this argument of saying that we must be 20 or 30 or 50 to oppose something we don't agree with is uh, then you are elected by yourself. Why don't you actually stand up and say, I don't agree with this? Number two, I have had uh, Senator Linturi speak, and, and this is not just about Senator Linturi. I know this argument about the issue about do we have an opposition. It is important to ask ourselves, why do countries have an opposition? Countries have an opposition because you're supposed to hold the government in check. Now, what we need to be asking ourselves, is there anybody who is holding the government in check? Is the government going beyond its limits? Is there an argument that they should not be doing certain things? Because you see, uh, Wahiga, I need to believe as a member of parliament and the people I represent need to also feel like they are being pushed by government for me to oppose it. If I do not think that government is doing something wrong, why am I opposing it? And I have said this before. I, as a, as a member of parliament for Nyeri, what the Nyeri people want are jobs, healthcare. There are certain things that they want. Okay. Are they getting those things? They want a, so a government you... that operates in a certain way. That is my oversight position. Should the government do something I don't agree with, you can be sure I will oppose it. I haven't had a reason to oppose anything that the government has done. And I can't oppose government for the sake of opposing it. What do you see as the future of the Jubilee Party, even as we wrap up this conversation? With all this that's happening, can you, I unite, personally think... can you unite a people if the party remains divided as it's been for the better part of the last two years or so? First, I don't think the party is divided because uh, when, we, when we just think about the, the, the meeting, the PG we had this week, we had actually uh, close to 70% of, of our membership there, close to 80% of our membership there. The one in, uh, on 2nd of June, we had a very large percentage. Any, all the people who people think are not members of the party were there. The deputy president was there. Uh, uh, people uh, like Senator Linturi were... The people who had actually said, they, who had been having a problem, were there. So I don't think we're having a problem. What we're having is a disagreement maybe of what... The, 
some of the things that the party has done. My problem with those disagreements is that they're being made public, why we should be actually be having them internally within ourselves. And that is my problem, and, and that is where I talk about party indiscipline, because we're supposed to do this internally. We're not supposed to be fighting. And when I hear people saying we are not meeting, we have the capacity to caucus. We have the capacity to hold Kabukonjis in parliament. We don't have to come and make noise outside and throw and point fingers at the party or the house that we belong to. So moving forward, I think Jubilee is going to get much stronger. I suspect we are going to be a lot more focused, as I had said earlier in the beginning. I suspect that Kenyans are going to be a lot more impressed by the kind of work we're going to do. Because first and foremost, the disagreements that we had, we had people who were out there doing campaigns for 2022 who have now stopped. We have people who were in committees who are actually not focused on delivering what we expected. They have now been removed, so we have people in those com leading those committees who are going to deliver as expected. Okay. And, and, and I'm also very sad to see that Senator Lin Turi was actually offered a chairmanship of our committee in Senate and he refused. It would be interesting because I expected that he would continue being able, being willing to serve the party in whatever position he is, that is given to him as a responsibility. Senator Linturi, as we wrap up the future of Jubilee Party, what are your options beyond, uh, as some have said, complaining on, on social media and in public? Uh, Mara, I said, uh, <clears throat> and which I want to repeat, that uh, we are not moving out of Jubilee. Gubili is a house that we created, it's a house that we built, it's our own house. We can't run away from our house and, and uh, just leave it to people. It will not happen. We will we, we, we'll fight for, for our space in, in Jubilee until the coming of Jesus Christ, the second coming of Jesus Christ. So I, can, I want to assure them that uh, uh, mm -hmm. they should embrace themselves for uh, under times. Because if they think whatever they are doing will make us uh, give up and go, we are, who is he we talking to? Going anywhere. For example, I cannot who is uh, them? Uh, personally, you know, it's like giving shares to a company if to, to your subscriptions. And even when you are leaving out or people want to get you out, they're telling you they cannot refund your shares. In Jubilee, we have a stake. We contributed to ensuring that it, became, it, it came back to power. I, even if I was to be kicked out, I would ask for my investment. And my investment is some bit of returns. And, and I do not expect that this can be resolved right now, but we require to use the mechanisms that are set out in the law because I believe in institutions. We are praying that even those and devices there, and because the problem, major problem I can tell you about is the brokers that surround the, the party leaders and, uh, and uh, who purport to have a lot to, to, to be have the influence and because the, 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 the members of parliament of the other lenders outside that circle are, are, out, are out of the perception created and want to believe them so much and this is what has caused us this problem. Because I don't personally think that the president really has any issues with the, with the, with the manner in which uh, you do want the affairs of the country being run. The support that he's getting from members of parliament. I don't think he has any doubt in his mind that we support him. But you know, when you find other colorless characters that uh, cannot be elected anywhere, people that are, are very bad in history, coming out to the public and telling him this is what the boss says. And because now, because of failure to have regular meetings that we can ask questions and get to understand the mind, and the, the boss also does not really tell us clearly this is the position, then there is likely a wound of this kind of misunderstanding. So we, we hope at one particular time we won't be able to bridge uh, that gap and be able to get back together as a happy family and be able to proceed. Because even as we sit in now here, we are, the president has loyal jubilee members who are senators, who are members of parliament, who is also a very loyal deputy president that he has, who serves him and because we made a commitment to the, the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. So if Jubilee was to fail, then it is a party with all the 179 members of parliament that will, be, will have failed. And it will be a serious embargoing for us, for us whose political careers are not ending in 2022. And I also want to say that let one book not to cheat this country, that the people start attending early campaigns. My friend, people today go to church every week and pray because they are preparing for the coming back of Jesus Christ, who is not known when he will come. The elections for the next, for 2022 will be either on 9th August 2022. We know the date and the time and when it will be done. So they cannot be correct 
to say that people are campaigning when you are using CDF money, crisscrossing, running up and down in Yeri town, trying to outdo all your political competitors on account to trying to bring the profile for you because you are candidate in 2022 in your constituency. Let us be honest for once. Let us not teach Kenyans. Kenyans are very clever these days. Okay. I can tell you the Asula nation has become so informed these days that even the kind of messages we are getting from them, my friend, you will not even believe it. Senator, you've made a very strong assertion against the Honorable Gunjiri. I'll give you 30 seconds to respond to that, Honorable Gunjiri. Thank you very much, Ohiga. I was actually scared you are not going to do that. I, I, I think it is important for us to be, as I continue, you, you have this conversation was just about honesty. I think to argue that you are not campaigning or to argue that you are not doing premature campaigns, that because people are going to church and preparing to, for the coming back of Jesus Christ, is to be disingenuous. I personally hope that uh, Senator Linturi and all the people who had moved away and were, had gone to focus on 2022 are going to come back and we are going to be able to deliver for now, because Kenyans are interested in what we are going to do now, not in 2022. And uh, I had him talk about an amorphous group called Hustler Nation. I think it's important for them to understand that we are the nation. We, all of us, as individuals, and we can see and we are smart and we can see through all the, the kind of nonsense that they're throwing out at us. Thank you. Okay. This is what Kenyans are saying online. Uh, what a conversation that's been. These are your thoughts. Let's put them up on the screen. Okay. Uh, tweets first. Albert Kasembele saying, according to Senator Linturi, it's only when Tanga Tanga are allowed to disrespect those in leadership and foster sectional 2022 agenda that democracy is thriving? Question mark. Okay, and another one here, Kip Kori Ronald says, kindly ask Gonjiri Wambugu why the executive is cracking the whip now, over seven years after the first time in office. Is it that the executive has just woken up now? Okay, I think we have some uh, SMSs. Yes, we do. No name, but you said, does Gonjiri mean that he would support wrongdoings in the name of supporting his party? And uh, last one, Rotit from Kericho says, do we elect individuals or party manifestos? Do the leaders push their agenda or the party's agenda? Weighty questions. I don't even know if we have time to let our guests respond to that. I think we're going to have to wrap this up. Unless I give them each uh, 30 seconds. Yes, I've, give, I've been given that approval. Honorable uh, Mithika Linturi, uh, it has to be 30 seconds. Yeah, I can only tell the country that uh, there is need for us to support uh, the agenda on building a united nation. Okay. Then because that is the cornerstone of ensuring that our country remains stable. And uh, at this particular time when we are faced with uh, this uh, pandemic, it's important to realize and know that every one of us matters and we all require one another in trying to fight this invisible enemy that we cannot use our Jesh tanks or the, 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 kind of, uh, the kind of guns that we have in this country. And for that matter, I want to plead with every Kenyan to end the, to the uh, protocols laid out by the Ministry of uh, Health in ensuring that we keep this COVID-19 pandemic at bay. Okay, and Honorable Mbugu, your parting shot. My parting shot would also be to focus uh, the country on unity. I think despite all our differences, uh, despite the differences that Senator Linturi and myself might have, part of our work is to try and make sure we deliver to the Kenyans who elected us. And as Jubilee Party and as a member of Jubilee Party, I continue to give the commitment that comes from our party, that our work is to, to make Kenya a better place before we are done with this particular term. And we will do that every day by bringing in as many people as possible to join hands together to make sure Kenya is peaceful, Kenya is developing, and everybody is being able to actually live within a safe environment. And let's, as, as uh, Senator Linturi has said, please let's keep safe. Let's watch, uh, let's listen to the MOH guidelines whenever we can, and let's do the best we can to fight this COVID. My goodness, finishing on a conciliatory note, that's how we wrap up this discussion. Honorable Linturi and Honorable Gwanjiri Wambogo, thank you so much for your time. And of course, thank you to everyone who has uh, sent their feedback. The hashtag has been Newsnight, the SMS line 22422. Just a glimpse into the political state of the country at this time. On behalf of the whole team that makes this program possible, including my sign language interpreter, Wilson Mushora, thank you for having tuned in. Have a good night. My name is Wahiga Maura. Please stay safe.